Hello, Flat Earth researchers, debaters, and debunkers. Thank you for joining me on this glorious sunset evening from Phuket in southern Thailand while we talk about how the flat or round earth doesn't matter from a Buddhist perspective. If you've been looking into the flat earth debate for a while, you'll have come across several different flat earth models, each one with some valid arguments or alternatives to the way we have been told things are. And it's all part of the search for the inner truth. Whether you agree or disagree with a particular model being put forward or whether you are suspicious that the whole thing might be a psyop uh, and you're suspicious of one particular person or another spreading disinfo or being a shill or being paid to direct people in another way, it really doesn't matter. Uh, from a Buddhist perspective, everything is a psyop. Life is a psyop. Every person can be a shill. Every thought that goes through your head can be a troll. Um, but that's not to say that it's a paranoid perspective. It's just the acceptance of a multitude of infinite perspectives as a possibility or as infinite possibilities. Pure acceptance of that. So there is no focus from the Buddhist perspective on the geographical shape of the earth, life and finding out what it's all about is simply experiencing the now and learning from that. So there's an awareness that whatever you hear, whatever you see, whatever you experience can be interpreted in a unique way as you internalize it and a unique perspective. So essentially this is what the flat earth debate is very much about when we talk about perspective as being something we've almost forgotten exists in our everyday life. From a Buddhist point of view, all perspectives are relevant, all theories are relevant. All ideas are relevant. All exploration is possible because that's just part of the Buddhist way of looking at life on earth. The whole idea is for it to be, to be varied and, of course, as peaceful as possible. So the Buddhist mind would avoid the conflict, avoid getting into a heated debate. They would always allow for that other person's perspective without judgment. Now, judgment is a natural thing that will occur based on our own beliefs or the way we see things. It's a natural thing that will occur but the point is, from the Buddhist perspective, is to recognize that you are judging. You've attached an emotion to something. You have affected the situation rather than the situation affecting you. So in that sense, all the people bringing new information or alternative ideas and theories into the flat earth debate are valuable. They each have information that we can take, consider and keep or discard however we see fit. But ultimately the point is to think for yourself and start discovering for yourself so you know things rather than just believe them. And again, that's a Buddhist teaching for all of life, is to not have a fixed belief in anything except what you know to be true through your own experience. And of course, throughout life, we meet good and bad people. But ultimately, it's up to us whether we are influenced by that good or bad. Whether we come entangled in a jealous relationship or competition with each other or 
something of that nature. A Buddhist monk once said to me, when talking of the different religions around the world, well, look at our hands. Even our fingers are different sizes. It's just a simple observation that nothing is ever going to be true for everyone. Life would be pointless then, wouldn't it? One of the flat earth concepts is that uh, we are covered by a dome of some nature, whether it's glass or some kind of barrier that we don't quite understand. There seems to be a lot of evidence to support that. But of course, there's also the theory that we are part of an infinite plane with puddles, possibly, of land in an infinite plane of snow and ice, or just a vast expanse of land that we haven't had access to or haven't been told about. Now, obviously, contemplating the idea that we're on a flat Earth is, is very healthy to break away from the conditioning, to understand the conditioning that's taken place in our formative years and have the ability to break away from that. People do that all the time, all over the place, from an infinite number of different triggers. There's probably an innate sense in all of us at the end of the day that the world as we know it is somehow is somehow wrong misplaced desires in our hearts as individuals we all want to mostly leave the world as a better place we want to do some good we want to pass on our knowledge to the next generation we 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 are we accept the fact that we are going to leave this physical world at some point and until someone points out that you're on a, maybe on a flat earth, then you accept the limitations of being on a globe. It's pretty big. Lots of different places to go. Even if we found out there was another few continents a few miles south, would we all rush there? Some would. Most wouldn't. <laughs> They'd watch it all on TV. <laughs> do reality shows about it. So, but okay, from the Buddhist perspective, the body itself is a prison. Forget about a dome hundreds of miles above our heads. We are slaves to our bodies, our physical existence anyway. If we've got a whole earth to run around in, well, cool, but ultimately the, the Buddhist aim, the ultimate goal is to emancipate yourself from the slavery that exists by being a physical human being, by going inward. No outbound journey is going to deliver the inner peace that is sought through meditation and other Buddhist practices, mind science practices. So whether we are under a dome or part of a massive expanse, an infinite expanse, it's all good to to find out what it really is, but can we? Are we supposed to? I'm not saying it's futile, but ultimately people that really seriously look at the flat earth debate, they get to a point, I think, where it's quite clear that a multitude of interpretations are possible. You understand the conditioning and the manip manipulation of people's minds to following a certain way of life based on preachings and teachings and politicians and bankers and 
what have you. But there's already an understanding with Buddhists that that is all futile and, and someone who is worried about their wealth and their power is suffering anyway. They're no better off than you or I. In fact, they're worse off. The more they have, the more they have to lose. The more paranoid they are about losing it. They suffer greatly. Whereas people awakening to their inner ambition are having a very fulfilling life. Then again, a psychopath will tell you he or she is having a very fulfilling life. They're playing out their role. And, of course, it would be best if we can spot these people and steer well clear of them. Now, after doing some flat earth experiments myself, looking at the, what happens to the horizon when we go down to ground level, it's become very clear to me that what we see and what we are told is happening on a physical level is, well, they certainly don't match up. Although they do match up in many respects because what we see as an optical illusion can be passed off as curvature. So there is a big, big illusion going on there. Huge, massive. But then, again, from a Buddhist perspective, there's an understanding that during our life, our physical existence, we're also on certain planes of existence. When your spirit is nourished and your soul is evolving, then, although we may all be occupying the same physical space, we'll meet certain people, we'll encounter certain situations on different levels, on different higher or lower planes of existence, vibration maybe, low vibration being negative, a higher vibration being more positive. But of course you need both anyway. You need the yin-yang. You need the dark and the light. You need the good and the evil. It's all part of it. But it's up to the individual to navigate their way through it. Reach a higher vibration, a higher vibrational state, which takes you on to a higher plane of existence. So then you'll encounter other entities, other people, other energies on that higher plane of existence. So that can all happen. It's a very metaphysical thing, which we can see and feel happening regardless of the physical shape of the earth. Thank you.